Hello everyone and thanks for joining us. Today we're talking about thinking maps. Thinking maps is an approach that we're using across our school district in helping students organize their thoughts, specifically in the area of reading and writing. This is an approach that we're using primarily in our elementary grades, but we're introducing in our middle school and high schools this current school year. The example you're going to see in this video is a simple example from fourth grade. However, it has implications across the district in that it can be used across contents, across grade levels. So when we think about our school district, this is a common language that all our children will have as they go from pre-K on up through grade 12 at Austin High School. Join us now in Matt Young's fourth grade class. Okay, so before we were learning that thinking maps have different places for different kinds of thoughts and we're definitely going to be using that in this lesson. Now we're not learning about how to make a thinking map. We're going to make a thinking map in order to learn something. The district has adopted uh, the eight thinking maps because we wanted to have a uniform and consistent basis to support children as they gather information and as they take notes when they're reading and writing in a similar cohesive way in order to ensure that they use that information to read and write and express their ideas. Now if we're going to differentiate, can you guess what kind of thinking map we would do? Jake? Like the two differences between like singular nouns and plural nouns. Yeah, so is that more a circle map or a tree map? A tree map. Tree, right? We're classifying into singular and plural. A child knows which kind of thinking map to use in a given situation when they start to think about what am I doing? Am I categorizing something? Am I telling a story in sequence? Am I retelling something? Am I breaking a part into smaller components? And if they're able to do that, they're able to choose a thinking map. The tree map was appropriate for today's lesson because we were classifying two different kinds of nouns, singular and plural. When a noun appears, determine, that means decide or figure out, whether it is singular or plural. The thinking maps are a tool to help you express in writing what you want to say or to express it in a conversation with other people. Or it's, it's a way to prepare an argument, but they're not the end product. The end product is a speech, is a debate, is a fictional story, is an essay that you're writing. So it can be used um, in any discipline. It could be used from behavior to a discipline, math, science, or social studies. It can be used in art classes. It is not necessary to have them, but we use them all the time without realizing it. We think in these eight ways naturally. What thinking maps do is they have sorted, they've classified the graphic organizers that are out there and found commonalities within those categories. Each map corresponds to a different thinking process and or strategy. So several of the maps that we particularly like to use are the double bubble map. And the double bubble map uh, asks kids to compare and contrast different information. Um, another map is the bridge map, which is one that can help kids synth synthesize information because it's about making analogies. Another map is a brace map, which actually asks kids to um, think about whole to part. So all of these maps are really utilized to help kids have a similar thinking process. Today, you are going to take that circle map of nouns you found in the video and around the classroom, and you're going to categorize them into plural and singular, or rather singular and plural. On this tree map, you're going to add to this tree map the nouns from your circle map, okay? It is important to conform to the conventions of a thinking map instead of designing your own that makes sense for you because once you do that, you lose the power of communication. So if we have one language, when you see the tree map, 
automatically think, ah, the writer has categorized information. You've saved a tremendous amount of time. You've facilitated communication. You've sped it up, made it more meaningful. So it's, it's just like sharing a language. And Thinking Map is a tool to communicate with others um, as well as a way of organizing your own thoughts. Since I've started using Thinking Maps with my fourth graders, I understand their thinking a lot better and they are challenging themselves more. They're taking more initiative with their own learning. They tend to see graphic organizers as something to do, whereas a thinking map is something they do for themselves, for themselves, not for the teacher. For a thinking map, you're also learning about your own thinking. You're making conscious decisions, making mistakes, blunders, and having successes, and you become more independent as a learner and more engaged. So as much as we want children to be engaged and the drive, in the driver's seat of their own education, this is tremendous.